Good morning, everyone. We're continuing here in the Chavetz Chaim. We're coming close to the end of Klal Tes, the ninth chapter. And he writes over here, Even if you hear your children, they're speaking Lashon Hara. You have a mitzvah to reprimand them, to help them stop doing this terrible sin. Like it says, it says you have to educate a youth according to his way. Like it says over there, you have an obligation to be mechanich, to educate and raise and train your children so that as they get older, they'll be able to keep mitzvahs properly. And if you see a child who's speaking Lashon Hara, you have a mitzvah to go and stop them from speaking. How much does a father have to constantly teach his children from their youth? To guard themselves in speaking Lashon Hara. So too, any other types of speech that the child has that he shouldn't, that are forbidden, like fighting and lying and the like. Like the Vilna Goin writes in his famous letter, Speech and midos and character traits need a tremendous amount of training. And once that you become you could become habitual in these areas, so then it will govern, it will rule over everything. Um, therefore, if you get accustomed to not speaking lashon hara and controlling your mouth, you won't speak anymore. And the truth is, when you think about it well. What's the reason that so many people trample on this mitzvah and they speak Lashon Hara? Since most kids speak whatever they want from the time that they're children and nobody objects and they go on like that all their life, they mailal that to never curse them. She is a cheshash is a bedaver that really maybe I'm saying something else. I should be speaking Lashon Hara. And therefore, even if later on, one discovers that what he's saying is, is asr, it's forbidden, it's lashon hara. It's very hard to change his ways. You cannot teach an old dog new tricks. If from a young age, he was accustomed to speaking lashon hara, and now he's 25, 30, and he finds out, ooh, this is lashon hara, very hard to change. However, if the father will constantly caution his children and warn them and help them stop speaking Lashon Hara from their youth, they shouldn't speak Lashon Hara, so too they shouldn't curse or lie to others, they shouldn't do this to any Jew, they shouldn't speak Lashon Hara by any Jew. So this is part of what's naturally ingrained inside of them that they that what that you don't speak lashon hara. And then it will be much easier as they grow up to guard themselves completely from this sin of speaking lashon hara, and they'll be careful. As a result of this, they'll merit the world to come. And all the goodness in this world, when you guard your tongue from speaking evil in this world, so then you will see good in this world as well. Says the Chavetz Chaim, every parent has an obligation to train their children from a young age not to open their mouths in Lash and Hara. And finally, he concludes over here, and he says the, he says the following words. If Reuven tells his friend, let's say Shimon, some personal information, Shimon is not allowed to repeat this information to anyone else. Unless Reuven said, I, I permit you to tell others. That's all, says the Gemara. Even when uh, says the Chavetz Chaim, even when Shimon permits Reuven to say words, that's as long as there as long as there is no lashon hara will not make him look bad. But even if he gives permission, but it's going to make him look bad, if Reuven will tell over this private information by Reuven, even there he would not be allowed to say such a thing. Okay, that is the end of Klal Tes, and in Hashem tomorrow we will begin Klal Yud, the tenth chapter. 
in Sefer Chovetz Chaim. Have a wonderful day.